So I really like that kind of setting it in the prescription right away, you know, it's going to be multiple plans. And then the last part here, the relative priority in the, in the plan objectives, I really like that. I think it's really useful to a planner. You know, if the physician says, okay, I have an OAR here, but it's not really that important to me. So if they mark that as like a low priority, the person who's doing the planning gets a little bit of information how they should structure that plan. I think it's really useful and it kind of speeds everything up. So I really like the inclusion of this. It's really great. Yeah, yeah, that can kind of help avoid kind of the going back and forth, right, of knowing exactly which one is the highest priority. Yeah, very yeah, good. Exactly. Okay, so this is a radiotherapy request form. So it's filled out by the radiation oncologist with the patient information. It looks like this is kind of, uh, my feeling from this is this is almost, it has a little bit of the prescription information, but this is more an MD order form with kind of some of the very basic details here. So you have the oncologist, the signature, what type of imaging to be scheduled, and then also obviously some prescription information here with the number of fractions and the dose, uh, so on and so forth. And if, if this clinic's on, online, if, if they could just comment on what exactly the purpose of this form is as far as who, it, who does, the, who does it, the radiation oncologist send it to? This form is filled by the radiation oncologist in order to inform our receptionist that this patient have, should, should be scheduled for CT simulator, for a CT simulation session. I see. So this is to request the CT simulation which we have here. Okay, very good. All right, this is uh, the next form, uh, which is a simulation sheet. So this is, here we see kind of more details on the simulation as, as uh, including, uh, I like the kind of the an anatomical landmarks here on the right, so you can kind of tell exactly what area. And it's, while it's not really labeled left, right, because you can see you know, sometimes with like a coronal scan, you can't tell if it's left or right, but here you can obviously tell what side is right and left. So I think that works very well. They have, you know, information about the prior uh, treatment. That's good to somewhere. That it's always good to document that at some place and some other prescription information. And then all this information regarding the simulation. So uh, whether it's head first, feet first, supine prone, breastboard, what type of immobilization here, other supports. So lots of, lots of details here that are very good to have. It's great to have some of these really annotated here so that the therapists have to go through and manually check yes or no, because otherwise it can be, you know, just very customary. And if they, they may forget to write it down or something. And, and so you may miss details, but having it specified here, whether something's included can, can be helpful to avoid some of those issues. Yeah, I really like the, this is a great, you know, great example of, it's pretty compact, you know, it's pretty readable, legible, you can see very quickly what you're supposed to do. And like you said, you know, even at my center, we still do like a hand, not a handwritten, but it's, you know, just a free text. And so the therapist can often forget what they, you know, one little item and often, whereas here you would know if somebody forgot to check yes or no, if it's blank, you know that something's missing. And the other thing I really like is the bladder, the full empty, and even the details of how much water was given and how long before treatment or before the scan. It's great information to record so that, you know, the therapists then know if the patient's bladder is not filling properly. They can look back and say, oh, they gave him much more or much less, et cetera. So I really like this. It was very impressive, this one. So it's great. Yeah, and, and it's documenting who's been involved and everything. It's very good. All right, and this is the treatment sheet, external beam radiotherapy treatment sheet. So here we have some of the information. I, after, I'm assuming after planning, this is kind of documenting the details for the plan that's gonna go to the, tr to the machine. So again, some of the prescription information is transferred over. You have the energy, the, the details for the therapy, <clears throat> the setup, some of the setup information is transferred, uh, and then documentation for the patient-specific QA. I like this kind of very kind of s succinct information that you know who's done it and the result and the signature. And if they want more details, they can go look at whatever software, but it's documented right here. I, I like that. I think that's, that's uh, very pragmatic. 
And then continuing that, we have our treatment sheet. The next page where we have each, basically each fraction um, is documented on the bottom and on the top here we have, I'm assuming those are different ISO centers, potentially different ISO centers and then, or different fields, sorry. Oh yeah, plan, field, ISO group, angle, all, the, all this information is then documented. Yeah, I like that too. It's, you know, it's got information that you would need to check the plan. You know, it's pretty succinct that there's not too much extra information. I think my only, and this is sort of goes for kind of all the, the, the groups was if, if, if possible, you know, if you could get a report from your TPS system, I think that's kind of useful too. You don't have to transcribe everything onto paper because you can make a mistake. So, you know, these kind of reports, I'm sure they exist, they can be customized. So if that's an option, I think that's something to do. If not, this is perfect as well. Yeah, that's a good point. And then the next page for the treatment sheet. So we have, uh, it looks like more information. This is kind of more broader information about the treatment. Assessment during radiation therapy. So this is very interesting. It's not something that we have. I think it's, it's it looks quite useful. Is I'm curious, who, who fills out this assessment? Is this a physician? Like, is this from their kind of uh, weekly follow-ups? <laughs> during the treatment course in order to, to denote uh, either by the... So who, who is it that, that fills this out? The, the, the therapist. The therapist. The therapist. And then it's signed off by the radiation oncologist and physicist. Looks like, oh yes, the plan is approved by the oncologist. And then the therapist will fill this out if they see anything. I actually just started yes. to jump in the you know, where, where I'm at in Stanford, we actually have our, like, we have our oncology system and then we have the clinical systems so that are separate. They don't talk. And so, you know, I live in the, in ARIA basically. So I never see this stuff, but I think it's very useful. In a couple of clinics back, we actually kept everything in ARIA where I could see the patients, you know, if any toxicity is coming up. I think it's really useful to, as a planner or as a physicist, you know, if I check the plan, and then a couple of months later, the patient is developing some sort of irritation. It's kind of nice for me to know that. I can go back and take a look at the plan, see if I could change anything, see if there's anything that I did that I could improve next time. So I think this is pretty useful for, for visibility for everybody. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. We have the same, the same type of a system where any of this information is not being stored in, in the EMR system for radiation oncology, but it's stored in the phys in the in the hospital EMR. So yeah. and because those are separate, not everybody has access to that system. And so it's really a lot less visible for some sort of follow-up like this. But this is, this is in some ways much more convenient. All right, so we're moving to the next center, which is the National Can Cancer Institute. This is the prescription template treatment record form they have here. So the top portion here is the physician prescription sheet. So we've got the machine, patient information, the aim, whether it's radical radiotherapy or palliative, the, the site, field size, separation. So this looks to me like a kind of a 2D technique. A gantry angle, collimator angle, dose, the duration, and then number of fractions and any comments. I like having a comment section because uh, there's certainly, you know, sometimes you have to be able to record if there's something special about this case that's going to treat slightly different. So I think it's always good to have somewhere to put uh, extra comments. And then there's a diagram down here so you can kind of mark exactly where the area it is. is. There's uh, you, uh, notes for the organs at risk and notes for patient positioning and immobilization. Yeah, my only comment for this one, and I think um, this goes for a lot of the clinics, is I think, again, this is like a 2D prescription because it's got field sizes, separations, gantry angles. Like, if you're doing a true 3D plan, often you don't need that information because that's going to be developed as the plan is created. You know, from the CT scan, the planner will arrange angles and gantry angles, commentary and field sizes in order to meet some criteria of coverage. So. Often this is, you know, if you're doing a 2D plan or a clinical plan, I think it's, it's valid. But if you're doing a true 3D plan, it's just kind of extra information. So sometimes it can get confusing. 
But I really like the organs at risk again, you know, giving the planners something to, to look at and make sure that they're paying attention to. I think it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, I think that it's a good example of, you know, this is a good 2D uh, template and in transitioning to 3D, this would be a good place for maybe revisiting the form and saying, how do we uh, adjust this or make a new form for a 3D technique that's, that's, that's going to, instead of really prescribing to a specific point and specific geometry of like field geometry, we're really now changing that to be you know, we have a CT, but we're going to prescribe dose to a specific target or a specific structure that's been delineated. All right, the next sheet here is uh, the treatment sheet. And so you can see we have field information, lots of uh, comprehensive information for each field, uh, SSD there and uh, prescribed dose and all this information for the fields and, and for different fields. And then going down, I'm assuming these are, yeah, so different fractions. So this is what's recorded by the therapist for each day of fraction. So we have the date, who treated it, and then all of this information for those, for those fields. If there's anything I would add to this is like a little comment section for the therapists for like a daily treatment. I know we, our therapists love adding notes to each other. You know, if there's a new therapist that comes in, they can read through and say, oh, this patient, you know, they like even something like different music or, you know, or their arm gets hurt in, in, in this position. So having like a little comment section for each fraction. Yeah. Or even, yeah, process. even be able to like note that, oh, you know, patient didn't show up this today or patient, right. you know, anything that happens, that's different. It is nice to have a comment section that, that allows you to kind of make notes on what happened for each, each fraction. That's a good, good point. All right, moving on. So this is, RICS, which is another radiotherapy center. And this is a prescription page. So we have on the top, we have the anatomical landmarks, some information from uh, blood tests, and then during radiation therapy. Oh, so this is, this is really. Uh, An assessment, like a weekly Yeah, assessment. this is very sim similar to what we saw back here, right? Uh, this kind of assessment during tr treatment. So this may, may not be a prescription, but it's, and then we have the signature of the plan. So this looks like information that's given, yeah, to kind of assess therapy. It's like during each week, it looks like. These are different weeks here. And then here, we have some instructions for setup. And this is, so we have the patient information at the top and see radical versus palliative. So this looks like prescription information, the dose that's, that's being prescribed and then the, which unit, and then a lot of different information for the setup for those fields, how it's set up. Yeah. So, you know, which type of items are being used and there's this A, B, C, D, E, F for region. I'm not quite sure if that's, how to, how to specify which one? Oh, I see. So then here you have the same A, B, C, D, E, F down here. So then you can kind of label what site it is and, and give a few more details. And then some, some more notes here about bladder em empty, full empty, other kind of setup information here. So, so a lot of details here. Looks like this is probably something that would be filled out, I'm guessing, by the therapist at uh, simulation. Yeah, for this one, I really like the reduced change field after. Uh, it's nice and visible for everybody to see, like, okay, you know, if we reach 30 or 30 gray, well, we're switching it to a different field. Kind of like that, that sort of at the bottom with the bladder people. That's important, and nice and clear. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then another part of that, we have here each field, the field information, the applicator size, the uh, I'm real size. I'm guessing this is, I don't know if this is on the skin or if this is something, something along those lines or at the ISO center or something, gantry angle, collimator angle, SSD, wedge counts. So basically each field information that's, that's being potentially, I'm assuming manually uh, put in for each field. 
And then looks like for each fraction down below, we have information for each fraction. So the, the fraction number, date, which unit, the signature of the therapist, dose per fraction, uh, time, cumulative dose. So, so information there that's a, that they can put in. Again, it'd be nice to have maybe a little bit of comments in case there's some sort of anything that deviates that, that they may need to make notes. Although here we have a little bit more. So further fields. Oh, I see. And so this is the top of this. So that we also have information about the bolus, dose per fraction, uh, what point is being prescribed to, and the date and the, sig the physicist's signature signing off on the field. And then they also have this note here. I, I think this might be their prescription. And if, and if you guys are on, if you want to maybe make some comments here on any of your documents here, I think I, this looks to me like it might be maybe some the prescription information for that's maybe put into a note form. Yeah, I think that, and then the right lat, left lat, I think those are field sizes because they match up with the, with the printout for the, from the machine. So I think they're, they're specifying field size as well as like two lateral opposite fields. So two lateral opposing fields. So I do like, you know, for prescriptions, putting in like a general layout, how you want the fields to be arranged. I think that's appropriate. I think going down again, if this is like a true 3D plan, I don't think you need to specify the size because you're going to go off of the contours that you're going off of or anatomical landmarks that the, the doctors should be setting. So I think that's probably a little extra information, but yeah, I think this is good. And then, yeah. Yeah, I, I do think it's really good to have kind of a form with a very specific information that needs to be put in for the prescription and that may be different for each center, maybe different for 2D and 3D as we've been talking about. And then, and then also, I also think it's good to have some sort of a free form note in case there's anything that, that needs to be put in there that's very specific to, to that, that patient. But I think it's good to have a combination of, here's the set information that needs to be put in and then here's the free form. My only comment for this too was that it's been a while since I've seen a handwritten prescription. I'm sure the same with you, Justice. So it just made me realize that, yeah, like if, if there's any way you can, you know, make these digital or make these, you know, you, you, know, you can potentially eliminate some errors for just for like reg legibility. You know, it's a big problem. So, you know, we live in ARIA, so everything's kind of done through the computer. So that's not always the case. But if there is, you know, a system that's there for each of your clinics that you can move to, I think that's something, yeah, something useful. Yeah, very good. All right, so this is uh, Riz Rizgari Hospital. This is the prescription sheet. So we can see here different plans going down, the date, the site, field arrangement, total dose, fractions, dose per fraction, frequency, uh, prescription point, mode and energy, separation, bolus, headrest, and then other notes. So looks like a little bit of a combination between here's the prescription and also maybe some notes for the for the simulation as well such as the headrest information things that they may need at the simulation also as noted there's you know kind of regimented information to put in and also some notes in case there's anything specific that's different about this case yeah i think it's a, a nice succinct uh, version of of a prescription here and here's the plan documentation. We have basically for each field, I'm, I'm assuming each, each column here is gonna be a different field. So the beam name, energy, all the, the plan information, gantry, collimator, wedge, bolus, the field dimensions. If there's an applicator, the SSD, the prescription point, and the dose per fraction and the fraction MU, and total dose and number of fractions. So this. And it gives all the information for a 2D calculation and for a 2D field. So it's very succinct. And then there's space for other notes. Looks, looks pretty good. Yeah, I really like the other notes part too. A lot of the time, especially when you guys start moving into more complicated 3D uh, treatment planning and, you know, there could be some, some, some notes that the planner needs to pass on to the therapists that wouldn't be captured at the simulation. You know, it's something uh, just off the top of my head, you know, like, 
if the patient's been scanned with their arms on their chest, but we're going to treat through that, so we have to move the arms down. You know, you want to you want to be able to add that somewhere. So I, I always like to have like a little note section that goes from the planning to the therapists, so that you know that that communication is right there. So I really like a little just an other note section. Yeah, it's, it's really good. All right, and then this looks like the treatment record that's recorded for each each patient each patient fraction. So the fraction number, the date, the fields, and some signatures, and it looks succinct. I mean, the only thing I would add again is maybe just uh, allowing some space for the therapist to add any comments for from day to day. But other than that, it's it's it looks fairly straightforward. And then this looks like for. I'm, I'm assuming this is what the physician, when they meet with the patient during kind of treatment checks, and so they have a date, notes, and the physician's name. So very, very straightforward. All right, so moving on, this is to the National Oncology Center. We have, this is a combination of the prescription and the plan documentation. So we have at the top the, the name, patient information, and then moving down the pre treatment prescription, we have the therapist and a technologist names, and then the site of the treatment, the technique, total dose, total treatment dose, the fractionation, the duration. I think that's fractions per day, I'm assuming, and then treatment days and week per, or weeks. So kind of all the information there for fractionation and dose, dose per fraction. And then moving down, we get a little more granular with the field information. We have each field, uh, we have the site and position, we have field size, treatment depth, so on and so forth, and set up instructions and remarks. So, so a very good information here for kind of a 2D treatment and all, all of the details there. And then there's a information there for change of plan as well. Yeah, I was going to say, I kind of like that too. Again, you know, if something changes, I guess I'm assuming that they would add that here, you know, the fields changed or the prescriptions changed. Again, I, I love having that information, you know, go back and see exactly what we're doing and why it's changed. Very good. All right. And then moving on, this is the physician order form for simulation. So that here we have a nice, on the right, we have this nice kind of anatomy where the, the, the physician can kind of visualize where the area that they want to sim they do the simulation. And on the left, we have information for the physician and the patient, curative versus palliative, dose per fraction, dose and fractionation. I, I, they have some information here about whether it's urgent. I think that can be very useful and depending on the situation and how many days it's needed. And then whether it's going to be with the simulator or CT simulator. So it uh, looks like we certainly have um, a clinic that has a combo of both here. So we And then the dates for the planning. And then for the planning requirements. So then now we're getting like what it, what is it used in the simulation. So the mask, where the chin is, the patient position, whether there's contrast, and then information for the scan and and the probable beam directions which could be useful for, I could see that being quite useful, for instance, if you know you, you don't know whether to simulate this patient with their arms up or their arms down. And you know some of that information could be quite helpful, I think, in, in deciding, depending on where they're thinking about having their beams. Yeah, I really want to just add to, I like the, the little part here, contour, what to contour after the sim. I think, again, as people are transitioning into 3D, contouring is a big, you know, kind of obstacle. Uh, and so, especially when you're starting out, you know, you, you, you might be contouring everything, you know, it's not even in the treatment field, it's very far away. So I like that. I like having a little cheat sheet for the, the, for the planner from the doctor to, or from somebody to just say, hey, just contour these ones. These are the ones that we're going to worry about. Don't, don't worry about, you know, like a foot if we're treating a head type of thing. Because, you know, as people start out, it's not clear. You, you know, you, it, you get that with experience as you, as you go. So I really like that little thing. Yeah, and I would just note that it's really good to have, and we, we talked about this in prior lectures, it's really good to have kind of a set list of, you know, if we're treating the brain, 
we're going to contour these five structures and, and we're not going to contour anything else unless it's made you make a note so you may have like a set a set of of structures and then you just kind of make any notes if you're going to add any to that list depending on the situation and so i think that can be very useful to avoid maybe sometimes it's hard to know which ones are relative and which ones are important and which ones are not and unle unless it's unless you already have a template set up all right and then here we have basically the treatment record so each fraction we have each field and the dose that's I'm assuming that's delivered and the therapist's name and, and the signature and the date. So very good information here for the treatment. Again, maybe just a, a comment to note or, or maybe there's another method that is already in place for you know, notating uh, what's happened with each fraction. All right, and this is a, another page of, uh, for the treatment record. So here we have patient name, diagnosis, therapist name, ther therapist's signature and date. So very simple information here for for the treatment. And I forgot to mention just as to a few of the places I don't think had therapist name. I think that's quite important to have like who treated the patient. If it's not somehow in your record and verify system, just to be able to say if something went wrong or if there's a question, you know, there's lots of therapists. So having the ability to see, oh, this is the therapist that went, you can go and talk to them. Uh, it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other, they act, act, they gave us another form here, which is the physics calculation. So we can see here we have all the information for the field and then the calculated dose uh, down at the bottom. So this is kind of the, the form that's used for their dose calculation, which is very good. And any notes there at the bottom. It looks like they also have, you know, who calculated it and the date and then it, who checked it as well. So that's, that's very good. There's kind of a second, a second check on that, which I think is a really good idea to have a good standard practice. Oh, and then they've got their, their notes here. So you could put in notes about the plan, I'm assuming, or your calculation or your treatment, something like that. All right. So we have one more institution here that we're going to go over. So this is the center in Morocco. And we have here the patient's information at the top, and then which machine it's going to be treated on, whether it gets a CT simulation, the last chemo section, last surgery, especially if there will be chemo sessions at the same time as RT. That's a very uh, important thing to put in there just because that's, you know, there's a coordination that happens there between chemo and radiation and that can make a difference. And, you know, from a physicist standpoint, uh, sometimes we can kind of be out of the picture for chemotherapy, but it's good to, you know, but, but it does need to be coordinated. So someone needs to do that and, and it's good to have a way of, of marking that. A patient's clinical summary, and then target volumes, used fields, dose total per and per day, and then number of sessions. So it looks like this is kind of plan information coming down here. Yeah, one thing I want to mention, yeah, again, I, I'll reiterate that the chemo thing is really nice, again, for scheduling, for everybody down the line. It's really important to know that chemo is going to be given concurrently so everybody can get their ducks in a row. And the other thing I want to just, it's very simple, and I'm not sure if any of the other places had it, but just a photo of a patient. Um, they have a little place for a photo there. I think it's, it's great to have a photo. Um, yeah, that's right. Making a patient is pretty terrible. And a lot of the time in past experiences that I've gone to, like birthdays are not even a, re a reliable kind of identifier. So we use birthday and name uh, here at Stanford. And when we went to a couple of places in Africa, they're like, oh, a lot of people don't know their birthday. Uh, and so that's, so a photo is kind of a, a great way to make sure that you get the right patient. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a really good point. And that's what we use as well as we'll have, we have a photo as part of our identification that gets put in the, in the chart as well. All right. CT simulation instructions and mobilization devices, devices and positioning info at the top. So that kind of a lot of uh, kind of blank space there to, to fill in. Uh, again, I, I think it can be really useful to have, if you have specific immobilizations that you use, kind of having a checkbox can be nice. 
this this works as well. And then I'll, I think it's always good to have some space to to make specific notes for the individual case. And that can be really important for things that can be easy to forget, like if there was a bolus included or if there was contrast used for the scan, things that may have happened and then it just, you know, you may, you may just get left off the note. So it's nice to have kind of a checkbox to make sure that you know that you go over it and you check whether or not it was done. Uh, number of fields, SSD, collimator, gantry angle, wedges. So this is kind of the plan information coming down. Uh, dose per session, number of sessions. And then at the bottom is the patient's daily calendar. So the treatment fractions, the record of that. It looks like. And then this looks like it continues as well. All right, and then we have dosimetric data. And looks like, I'm not 100% sure what those say, but it, it looks like that's probably where they're uh, making uh, records of the dose calculations, I'm assuming, and then the signatures. And then notes for, looks like, throughout the treatment. Very good. All right, so I also threw in my center what we do. Now, again, we we do mostly everything EMR here, so it's a little different, but you know the basic, a lot of the things are essentially the same. And when I first moved to this center, we, we transferred from, we made the tra tra transition from uh, paper chart to electronic chart. And, and that, for a big center like us, it was, it was a little bit of a headache, but so I do remember using forms that are very similar to what have been presented. And, it, and this really, in a lot of ways, is just a continuation of that with this, you know, it's just mostly now in, in the electronic medical record system. So at the top, what's blank, blacked out here is kind of patient information. You've got the photo of the patient and the name, ID, birth date. And then in the bottom right here, we have uh, prescription name, and there's a, you, if you clicked on this, you'd be able to see the, the signature of the physician, the fractions, uh, where it's prescribed to. So it's prescribed to an isodose line. You could also select like a point, uh, the number of fractions, the total dose, the energy. It's important to make a note of that. The technique, so photon, IMRT, 6X. Uh, and then down below, we use a, we have put a lot of stuff in notes here. There's also some options in our systems, including ours, to to kind of quantify this as uh, not in a note preform, but but in some other way, uh, such as the bolus or the imaging. But we just make notes here as far as that includes uh, whether there's prior treatment. So you can see here, no prior RT, meaning no prior treatment, and then any uh, daily comb beam, you know, so basically any information about the imaging we put here, but you could also add it in a different, if, different location. And then any changes to the prescription, there's a note here as to why the change. Do we have some chat here? Let's see if there's any questions. We use system information to save data. Is it required to have a hard copy? That's a good question. Uh, I, I think that that made I, so. I, I assume that that would that would. I think that probably there, there may be some kind of national guidelines on, as to whether that's a requirement, and so a lot of that I can't really speak to, or you know. In our case, we do not have a hard copy. Everything is in electronically, and but then again. There, there's some benefits and some disadvantages to that. So for instance, if our network goes down, then we're kind of out of luck as far as treatment goes, because we have to be able to use the electronic medical record. And so the plan has to transfer over in that way. We, we, we don't ever load that information in manually. Uh, we used to, we don't do it anymore. And so because of that, you kind of have to rely on your network and some of those systems always being available. So there's pluses and minuses. At the same time, that one of the big advantages is a lot of that information transfers seamlessly. You don't have to worry about you know anything that's manually printed or or written. You know, getting 
mixed up or put in the wrong chart or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Peter, you have same. any other comments? No, I think it's the same thing. I think you have to kind of assess place by place. You know, if it's something that you are confident in, you know, that's getting saved back, you have access to it afterwards, that you can pull it up at any time. I don't think you need a hard copy in that sense. Again, barring any sort of, you know, legal or, or uh, issues like that. So we also don't keep any hard copies for most things. But that said, we're all paperless as well, but people love writing stuff down on a piece of paper. And so we actually have just a single piece of paper that you know, therapists can add comments to and things like that, just because they, they really like that piece of paper. So, but in my personal opinion, if you can go back and take a look at what you did and, or, or whatever it is that you're doing, the hard copy is just a copy. I, I don't think it's that necessary. Yeah. So sec another question here, can we rely on Mosaic only if we wanted to go fully EMR or we have to buy another EMR software? I mean, for registration, prescription and final report provided that we are a standalone radiation center and not part of a, a hospital. It's been a very long time since I used Mosaic and I, I, the, the hospital I was at, I was actually a student. So I don't have a ton of experience with Mosaic, but most of the radiation EMR systems, I would say are meant to be kind of work as a standalone system. I think where it starts to get difficult is if you want to have information in there about chemotherapy and some of your other uh, surgery and, and you know you, if you're trying to kind of uh, seamlessly incorporate data from not just radiation oncology but other things as well that could maybe get a little difficult and so I don't know I, I think it probably depends on your situation and there could be benefits and disadvantages to it. Uh, so this is a copy of our simulation order this may be a little too much information for as far as, you know, there's a lot of things to check here, but we've kind of erred on the side of uh, putting in details and then um, allowing them to, to select them and having less things that they kind of put in that's kind of free information and more that's kind of granular. So, you know, you've got your patient information at the top that actually pulls in automatically and then the site and some things here about, you know, is it a falls risk patient? Is, are they at risk of falling or anything that they might need to know just for even getting a simulation done? Whether there's a pacemaker, chemo information, the which facility they're treating at, because we have a lot of different facilities that work together and, and they, they patients from, from different Facilities that are going to get treatment at different facilities may get their simulation at, at the main center. The energy, although this, of course, is preliminary at this stage. And then once we get down here, we get to more about, you know, which other information for the CT. So if we have something like a radio surgery or a radio surgery or SBRT, they may select, you know, the finer CT thickness. Otherwise, you know, one of the thicker ones. Any other imaging that we would need. Uh, and then how, how are they going to be treated or how are they going to be sim? So supine or prone, arms up or down or on chest, how the head should be, and then which immobilization devices they would prefer that we use. And so this, obviously, this is something that would change with what's being used in the clinic. So this, this is a set that we're using, but, you know, that could be different, so on and so forth. And then what markers should be used information about the contrast and information about the, the the CT as far as like motion management goes. All right, so a couple more questions here. Who is prescription EMR? So this is our, so this is, when I say prescription, this is like what the prescription is and EMR stands for electronic medical record. So this is basically just our form for the prescription, but it's an electronic form. It's not paper form. And then the other question is, how long should we save patient data? For some regulations you want to save for 10 to 15 years. Is it possible to have it with system information for this period? Uh, yeah, so that, that's another good question. You know, if you have a paper record, you could just keep it around for 10 to 15 years. If it's only electronic, then you have to think about that. If you ever change, you may have to keep a copy of your treatment records uh, that it, you, around. So 
that's that's available if you need it if you ever change what type of electronic medical record system you use that or else find some way to transfer in or so on and so forth so those are all really good questions logistics if if you're trying to you know think about making that sort of a switch so this is the next page for the simulation order um, this is if we have any other images coming from outside institutions this is information for importing that the treatment frequency the the technique that's being planned this is for our conventional simulator which actually is now it says conventional simulator but yeah we have most of our contrast information up here and then um, any other space here for any other special notes and then finally like a scanning range so we have the range here and they will select this on now i will note that uh, sometimes we'll get complaints from our physicians saying that, oh, you know, I can only select these two, but you didn't have to go that high. So I don't know if this is the best uh, way to do this in how to, you know, delineate what area needs to be scanned, but this is kind of what we do. All right, this is another document um, from our center that I thought I'd pull up and share. And this is what is filled out by the therapist at the treatment site. So, or at the treatment, the CT simulation. And then it can, it's also pulled up by the dosimetrist during planning and it's pulled up by the therapist at the treatment and they go to do their, their treatment. So actually I take it back. This is, a, this is, this form is actually the, the, the form that they fill out um, prior to treatment. It's just kind of a checklist to say, Oh, you know, is this, is everything in, in place? And then they add their photos as well. Yeah, just so I just mentioned that again, you know, we could do this because we have ARIA and we can drop digital files into it. But photos are, are great, you know, for setups, especially take three, four photos of the setup. Even if you miss writing something down on the worksheet, it's excellent for a therapist to be able to go back and look at the photos and just see exactly how the patient was set up. So I, if you guys have a way of doing that within your systems, if you have like a digital like a mosaic, I think you can embed photos or if there's anything in that way that you can figure out, I think that's a very useful additional thing to your workflow. Yeah. yeah. And then at the simulation, they'll, they will make some notes about what immobilizations use and they'll add photos and they actually put that in kind of a free text form up in this top right. They'll add their photos in this and the form very similar to this. But yeah, adding photos can be great to take some photos of your, you know, even if it's like a Polaroid or whatever and just put into the paper chart of, you know, here's, here's the setup at simulation and they can kind of re repeat that at the treatment. For the, uh, this is the plan information that you can kind of see at the machine. And so this, uh, you know, since we're using an EMR system, it's, it, this is all kind of pulled up automatically at the machine. Very standard, what you would expect. And then this is the treatment record, also from the EMR. And so you can see it records each fraction, whether what imaging was happened. And this is all kind of automatically uh, uh, pulled. Right, we, for a long time, we had two, two records. We had a paper record and this record. And eventually, we dropped the paper record, and we just used this record. But I think there's advantages to both. Yeah. The other form that I, I, I wanted to just pull in here was this form, which is a dose measurement form. So you can see here, basically, if the patient's going to get a, a measurement at the, at the machine, we put in where it was located and the dose is delivered and, and some notes about the setup. We have a very similar form, basically, for like a pacemaker case. This would be used more for like a skin measurement for an electron case or something. All right. Yeah, so I've just so, for, um, for like a, as a conclusion, just a couple of kind of notes. For the prescriptions, I think generally everything looks really good. All information's there, especially the, sort of the clinical information is always there, which is really nice. Once you guys are moving into like fully 3D, I think your prescriptions will become a little bit less specific, right? So I don't think these the field arrangements need to be that detailed. Gantry collimator table, field sizes, wedges, those are determined by the plan. As you're moving, you know, as you're planning in 3D to try and get dose to the structure that you're aiming at, 
uh, you don't need to specify that in the prescription. That's, that should be determined by the planning you know, activity. That said, you know, you, you, as you transition, you're going to have both 2D and 3D or something in between. So, you know, you have to kind of arrange your prescriptions and your forms to kind of be able to do both, I guess. And then, like, like I said, you know, if you have the ability to, you know, enter a prescription digitally into your electronic health record, I think that's a way to do, a bit to go. Because, you know, handwritten prescriptions, they can vary a lot. Handwriting is really poor. So it's just, there could be a lot of errors that come up with that. So if you have the ability, you can explore it. If not, you know, you just have to live with it. But a lot of the electronic health records have that kind of ability. In it. If you could go to the next slide. Please. So yeah, basic info, I think, you know, keep it minimal. So total dose, number of fractions, the site, the modality, electrons or photons make a big difference because that's going to be, you know, pretty important for the planner. And I noticed a, almost all the sites kind of missing this is the laterality is really important. So, you know, left to right, breast, it can get very confusing. We've had very close calls every, you know, many places that I've worked at where people just didn't specify it and the wrong site was contoured and, you know, it could go all the way through the treatment. So it's very something to add, you know, think about adding to your prescriptions. General mobilization and filling instructions, if they're not in some sort of simulation worksheet, I think they're good to have, just generally how the physician wants the patient to be uh, positioned. And, you know, like I said, energy bolus are important. And I really like that, you know, a couple of slides ago, the, 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 the group had dose coverage information, which was very nice. You know, what you want to cover, things like the number of phases for replanning are important, OAR constraints. It really gives a lot of information to the, the docent or to the people who are going to be doing the planning. Chemo is important, like we mentioned. And the one last thing I think we didn't talk about was imaging instructions, right? So taking a few uh, lessons back, we talked about how PTVs can be expanded depending on what you're doing, right? So if you have a lot of imaging and a lot of mobilization, you can have a PTV margin that's pretty tight. As you reduce the amount of imaging that you're doing, you have to expand your PTVs to make sure that you're going to get the target. So I think having some information about imaging, especially as you move into more and more aggressive treatments, should be important and probably should be mentioned to the therapists. So again, we have a lot of different ways to mobilize a patient, a lot of different ways to image a patient. So it's important for us to tell the therapists, for this particular patient, do this type of imaging, for this patient, do a different type of imaging. So this is an example here for mine. Again, we're in the same system as Justice. So electronic health record from ARIA, from Varian. And I just circled where we put our imaging, right? So you can see that we're doing KV, KV every fraction and a comb beam weekly. Uh, again, this is our, we also give our therapists kind of like a, a rundown of what OARs we want them to pay attention to. So on the left is ours. And on the right is that, uh, that group from, uh, I can't remember where, I'm sorry, but I really love the, we don't even have this, so I'm going to steal this actually from them and actually put a column in just to prioritize what, what's important, what's not, right? So if you give a planner, you know, 20 OARs to worry about, sometimes it can get out of hand. But if you tell them I'm most interested about one, two, three, and less interested in about four, five, six, it's really useful. Simulation worksheets were very good. I love the anatomical landmarks, the, like the sketches and the ability to circle where you want and where you want the scan to be. I think those are excellent. Things to maybe think about adding to your sheets. Head first versus feet first. You know, it's not often we'll scan patients feet first, but it can be there. And if, and if you don't properly annotate that, that could lead to some laterality issues. So maybe adding head first, feet first as well. Bladder rectal fillings are huge because they're going to be, you know, they're, they're, you need to make sure the patient's internal anatomy is reproduced. And I, I, you know, I don't love the free text for setup information. I really like how Justice and a few of the other sites have a lot of checkboxes of what kind of immobilization we're doing. So if you go to the next slide, I'll show you what mine looks like. And it's unfortunately, well, this is our order form. So the physicians can ask for very specific things, sort of like Justice's. But if you go to the next one, this is what our therapists annotate after they're done. And you can see on the left-hand side, it's ours, and it's a free text box. And I, I don't love that. I actually prefer sort of like this example where, you know, you can very clearly see if a therapist has, if they neither check yes or no, you know that that was a missed, you know, check box. That was a missed thing. So it's very clear what we're doing and if anything was missed. I really like that. 
And again, I want to highlight the bladder instructions, even if going as far as how much water they've, they've been drinking and how many minutes before. Every patient um, fills bladder differently, so this is quite quite useful. And I love the pictures. Again, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. For the tra treatment info and re reports, so again, this is very dependent on how your system is set up, but if you have the ability to print a report from your treatment planning system, I think that's excellent. That's, you know, you basically take a report, you print it, and, or, and you can either embed it into you know, the system, or you can actually just print it out and give it to the therapists to look at. And that way there's no transcription errors. And you should include, sometimes you can actually include, we, we do this, it's a screenshot of what the, what, the, um, plan, what the plan looks like. I'll show you an example on the next page, but it really gives therapists an idea of what the dose looks like, where it's gonna go. Because again, going from 2D, 2D is what you see is what you get. You know, you're, you can very easily tell what a field is treating on a 2D plan. If you move to 3D, sometimes the fields get very strange. There could be MLC shifts that don't make sense. You could be coming in from many different uh, positions. And so having maybe some more information on it is it's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can go ahead, yeah, Justin. So this is what we give. Uh, we'll give a report on the right-hand side. It's a little report that we print. It's got you know, all our information, and it's got some shifts. There's some shifts from our CT ref. We'll, you know, we'll give those to the therapists. And we also give, always give them the screenshot of our ARIA plan. It gives them the idea of where they're treating, gives them the idea of where the PTB is going to be, where the hot dose versus the low dose. So when they're aligning up a patient and the patient isn't aligned perfectly, it kind of gives them the idea of where that dose is going to go if they can't get the patient perfectly aligned. You know, they, they're, they're really happy with this. If you ever forget the screenshot, it's the first thing they'll call you and ask for it. So it's just useful to have, I think. Treatment records, again, this actually, I'll take that back. I was thinking you can arrange these by plan and not by fields, you know, but if, you're, if you have no electronic uh, recorded verify system, you sh it makes sense to record how many MUs per field that you, you've delivered. You can track the fraction in the total dose, it's especially for these multi-phase plans. If you're going to change a plan halfway through treatment or after a certain number of fractions, you really need to track the total dose in the fraction in the, in the number of fractions, just to you know very clearly be on the lookout for a certain number where you're going to switch. And I think we've mentioned it numerous times that on these treatment records, have a place for the therapists or the, the you know the people delivering the treatment to make some notes. And it really allows better communication, uh, makes it clear of what's happening day to day. And, you know, if there is any unresolved issues or if there's any trouble with a plan, it, you can go back and really see what happened. And I think that was it, right? Justice, is there one more? Yeah, that's it. No, that was good. All right. Uh, if we, do we have any other questions or comments from anybody? The other question I think I would ask is, is there any, so we have two lectures lined up. Uh, really to talk about documents. And Peter and I will talk about what will be best for next time. But does anyone have any thoughts on that about anything they would like to see more relative to documentation or uh, something that they would be interested in talking about next time around? I wanted to ask a question. Yeah. So the documentation, can you say it's more for the whole team, the radiation oncologist plus the physicist and the therapist? Because according to the presentation, it looks like more of the physicist and the therapist than the radiation oncologist. I don't know if I am right in that or not. I, I think that's sort of the idea. Again, the, the documentation that we presented here is, you know, for the radiation therapy specific part. And I think the physicians start the process and everybody else follows. And so I think, at least from my perspective, yeah, I think the documentation is most important for the therapists, for the physicists, for the people doing the plan, because it's less, less about, you know, the clinical aspect of how the patient was staged or what kind of lab work or surgery or things like that. That we kind of live separately before it reaches the, the clinic. You know, the therapist often, for example, doesn't need to know if there was, I don't know, I guess for chemo, they would need to know because they might schedule the patient concurrently, but you know, how the patient was staged is not that important for, for everybody down the team. So it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's the radiation therapy part is kind of at the end past with the oncologist. Would you agree, Justin? Yeah, I, I would say, so, I mean, there's more paperwork, more documentation than we have presented here. 
uh, we've kind of presented the stuff that is really focused on how do you take a patient from a simulation to a successful treatment and, and you get all the information from the prescription, from the simulation and the plan to the therapist in a succinct way to carry out those fractions. So it's really focused on the radiation therapy being executed. And, and a lot of it is really kind of therapist uh, centric and maybe some of the planning and the dose calculation information as well, which involves everybody on the team, but it's really focused on the therapy. But there's a whole other side that we haven't really looked, really presented too much, which is uh, kind of the overarching picture that the, that the radiation oncologist gets. And with, you know, is there, you know, concurrent treatments or, you know, is there chemo involved? Is there surgery involved? Is there other physicians involved or the emergency room or blood tests and all these sort of things, uh, they, they usually are a little bit peripheral to how is the radiation therapy carried out and successfully and all that information communicated. So those are very important parts. We haven't really focused on them. And, and, and I think there's a lot of different ways that those can get carried out. And it's, that's much more of a hospital-wide documentation question, really. Yep. Hi, Justice and Piotr. I think Abul Ghassim has uh, was asking if you guys can include also in vivo the submitted documentation, I guess, in the future? Yeah, actually, one of the slides was in vivo, a, d a dose form. But if we could ask for that, and we could talk a little bit more about that for next time, if, if there's an interest. Uh, it sounds like there is. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Thank you so much, everybody. And um, thank you so much for sending in your forms. I think it's very useful. And hope, I hope that you guys got some good feedback and some good ideas for how to make your processes maybe improved a little bit here or there, or, or, at, or maybe just a nice pat on the back and know that you're doing really well or however it is. Thank you.